guys, and welcome to Flashback Generations. Hello. It's been a long time coming, but here it is, the X-Wing episode. Finally. <laughs> I think we were going to do this about uh, three years, two yeah, years ago. Yeah, three years Yeah, before. when it first came out, we were really egging to do it. We never really got around to it, and uh, well, here we are instead. This will be a bumper episode, and hopefully a great one. I'd say three years late, but moving fast. The game's contents. Only recently, we've uh, moved on to a version two of the game. Um, with the uh, new and updated box for the uh, upcoming films. Yeah, Force, Force Awakens themed Corsa. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so the whole game's kind of uh, updated with that. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's very nifty and they haven't actually moved away from the core. They didn't suddenly uh, decide that the whole thing needs to change. Fundamentally, it's the same it's, thing in the same box. It's a reskin, really. Uh, I mean, there's some slight differences. So in the original box, you, you get, uh, and in the new box, you get <clears throat> Everything you'd expect, you get a set of dice, um, you get three ships, you get two TIE Fighters and one X-Wing. Uh, there's a TIE Fighter, that's one of the old old school ones. Uh, you get one X-Wing, because one X-Wing is worth roughly two TIE Fighters under the point system. You get um, a load of rulers, these aren't actually the rule, the movement manoeuvre templates, these aren't the ones you get with the game, these are um, third party ones. but. You get the ones you get with the game, the cardboard. And the, you get cardboard ones. You, you get everything you need to actually you start the game. Maneuver dials, tons uh, of <clears> counters. <throat> uh, it's legendary the amount of counters you get with this it's game. It's FFG, so of course you get the counters. Yeah, lots of cardboard. Uh, you get these asteroids. Asteroids, yeah. Well, they're the old ones, so you get the new ones. Uh, they're different. And you get a stack of uh, cards to represent the ships and various upgrades. Mm. Um, and the, a damage deck. Damage so, deck. so you draw these when your ships are damaged, when they've run out of shields. Uh, I'll, I'll note that that's one of the few things in the uh, the new game that you need to do to keep up to date. Uh, you don't, because they've just recently changed the FAQ to say if you've got the old core set with the old damage deck, you can use that if you want. Up until January? Nope, continuing. Really? Yeah, they changed it. Um, and th there's a new, slightly different, and with a slightly snazzier explosion thing on the back that with the new Force Awakens core set oh, really? that you can use optionally as well so um, here they are side by side yeah so initially uh, when the Force Awakens core set came out it was going to be from you know you've got a camera there <laughs> so yeah fr from January 2016 um, <coughs> you need to use the new deck and people pulled their faces about that Sai not least um, because it meant you have to, if you're a Tony player you've got to buy the new set to, to can carry on competing uh, well they backed down from that and, uh, and said that uh, you can use either or there's not a massive difference slight tweaks you know the average casual player wouldn't care less really to be honest on oh, I think that's, uh, that's a great u-turn to, to make yeah but the basic structure of the core set is the same I mean the, the performance of the ships the, the old X-Wing and the, the old TIE Fighter versus the new the slight tweaks just to keep it fresh for us old timers who've been playing it for three mm -hmm. three years or so um, but otherwise yeah it's the same deal really so the <clears> contents <throat> you pretty much yeah, uh, you get quite a lot for a, a, a core set, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, if you're a Rebel player, you only get one ship. You do, yeah, yeah. I mean, most people, I mean, when we started, I think we bought, bought one each. So I had four TIE Fighters, you had two X-Wings, and you can get a good game out of that, can't you? You can indeed. Yeah. Um, and you have, you're have quite a way along, you know, quite far along the way to getting a, a, a tournament standard list of 100 points there. You're yeah, not far yeah. Off. well when people ask me uh, like uh, what, how much do I need to play this game, I, I'm literally like well you'd only need two ship realistically if you want to go down that route. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, actually let's talk about the rules. The game rules. Okay, so the rules are uh, very easy to pick up, <clears throat> very simple rule set. Um, basically each uh, model represents a ship, <coughs> excuse me, and um, you manoeuvre the ships and then uh, do combat between between the sides. Um, the way you manoeuvre is um, every ship's got a dial like this um, with various manoeuvres on. Different ships have got different manoeuvres possible. So some are really nippy, some are fast, some are slow, etc. What you basically do is um, at the start of each round each player get, picks up a dial for each of the ships and secretly chooses one of the manoeuvres by turning the dial like so. Uh, and then you put the dial down, uh, you can put it down next to the ship if you want and then <clears throat> each ship's got a pilot skill, which you can see here, this X-Wing's uh, a character, he's got a high pilot skill of 8, this TIE Fighter's just some uh, you know, rank and file pilot, he's pilot skill 1, so in reverse, uh, well in 
pilots in the order of uh, lowest pilots go first. You maneuver the ships. You reveal the manoeuvre uh, and then maneuver the ship. So the Tie Fighter would go first because his only pilots go one. Uh, the idea being that higher pilot skill pilots get to see what everybody's doing before before they move. So this Tie Fighter might have performed a, a one forwards, which he can't actually do. <laughs> so he'll, he'll do a, a, a one. Uh, Turn to the to the right. Sorry, the left. Yeah, so it's handing me the template. So we'd use this this uh, maneuver template for that. So that that's the maneuver he's doing. So without moving the ship, obviously in the game, you would put that into the front guides that are on the base there, and then you move the ship along the template, and then place the ship with the template in the rear guides. That's very nearly a crash, and there's rules for colliding ships together. And uh, which is something you don't generally want to do. Yeah, yeah. Generally. <laughs> so, so after you move your ship, then you get all these tokens. <clears throat> um, yeah, the, after so maneuver, it's perform an action, isn't it? So these actions. So the, your Tie Fighter is an option. What does he want to do next? Typically, you want to put a focus token down. That means that he's going to have a better chance of hitting people or a better chance of evading. Yeah. You know, if he wants to all out evade, you've got an evade token. So there's loads of tokens, as is FFG, you know, and so you just, you. Move your ship, do an action. And the actions that a ship can, can do is shown on its uh, base there. And or the card. And also on the uh, the cards. So uh, this one can do focus, barrel roll, boost, or uh, evade. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, that's, that indicates a very nippy, sort of dodgy sort of ship. Yeah, we won't go into the nitty gritty of what no. every action is. because uh, well, we'll be diff Different ships have different actions and that's one of the main dynamics of the game. Yeah, um, as well as that, what Pete never mentioned, on the dials you've got three different uh, colours. So there's green, white and red. And that corresponds with how well they can do the manoeuvre. So <clears throat> um, an A-wing, for instance, has a lot of green on the dial. So because they've got so much green, they don't get stress. Stress is a negative uh, impact that these ships get. But the A-wings don't really uh, feel it that much because yeah. they can clear it all the time. As opposed to these uh, shuttles, which cannot really do very many manoeuvres. Yeah. And you know, so they actually live on the, the stress level. On the manoeuvres, in a massive, pa a massive part of the game is uh, the Koyugur and turn. Basically, a lot of sh most ships, not all, uh, can do a red manoeuvre. That means it's difficult. And there it is there. Um, of different speeds, which means basically you put your template down, but instead of just moving along the template, you actually move along the template and flip 180. You know. uh, that's a massive tactical part of the game. Uh, some ships, the odd few ships can't do it, like shuttles, they can't do that at all. They're just, they go forwards or nowhere. Um, and, but that, that's a big manoeuvre. <clears throat> um, and as well as that, on your templates, you'll see that they've got these little triangle uh, marks on them. That triangle uh, signifies their firing arc. They can shoot anyone in front of them. Um, there is lots of weapons in this game that have 360, you know, so that it's not just, uh, it depends how you want to build your list, so it's not all just down to this, and, you know, some of them have uh, rear firing arcs or, uh, you know, weird firing arcs, so there's, yeah. there's a lot of um, interesting little points to it, as well as um, the ship sizes, so you've got, like, the, the tiny, you've got your standard small square ship, you've got the larger ships, and then you've got the epic ships, um, and they all uh, work a bit differently in games as well. The epic ship is basically, uh, well, two plus of, a, of, of this base size. Yeah, they are huge. <laughs> Everything is just, uh, it, it, it all kind of balances out the way uh, the, the points cost, the, the, the um, army structure composition, yeah. the way that works. Um, it's, a very, it's a very simple game to read the rule book. You, you can literally pick up the rule book and understand the game yeah. uh, with no hassle. The difficulty and um, understanding of this game comes in the cards and abilities and extra things that get thrown into the mix. Yeah, so, so uh, I mean, you've got a, a lot, I mean, basically, you, you can buy extra ships for the game and all the extra ships come with uh, more and more upgrade cards. The upgrade yeah. cards are the small ones that can be equipped to your ships. So there's a tie, sorry, there's a tie interceptor character with four upgrades on him. Um, the upgrades can often be used on they're not restricted to one ship type, so you can put something on the Millennium Falcon, and you can put it, you can put it on a Tie Fighter or mm. certain types of Tie Fighter, and that means there's a massive amount of combination, but almost really endless is, yeah. permutations of upgrades of ships. You know, uh, the synergies between the upgrades. Uh, that's where the the depth of the game comes from, isn't it? Certainly, certainly. <laughs> so actually, um, 
learning the game is easy, but mastering it uh, has to be said. It, it does become um, a larger uh, amount of ha ha uh, luck versus list building versus actual maneuver. So, yeah. ha um, and it's got an even spread throughout of those three things. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the, list building is probably the most important aspect, uh, in my opinion. But it maybe is. 40%, 30% <coughs> luck and 30% actually flying. Definitely. Also. I mean, you, you can't. I mean, we, we, there's there's an, a famous X Wing building uh, app out on the internet where you can do a random squad. Th those random squads generally won't do well, but if you build a really, really good list, a couple of bad dice rolls can ruin the game for you. But um, th th there's a fine balance of, of making uh, sure that all these factors are in your favour. Uh, if you've got a weakness for fluff like I have, um, then you, you might not build the, the absolute best list you can because it just doesn't feel right, you know, in terms of the fluff. So uh, two decimators, that's that's mm. the big imperial thing. That was a big, powerful list for about three or four weeks. Um, and there's a few guys doing really well with that, but I never really was comfortable running it because you should have a decimator with some little tie escorts around it because that's the fluffy way to go. You know? uh, and, um, lastly, and you can do the fluff games as well, can't you? We'll talk about the dice as well. Oh yeah. So the dice are actually a bit weird. You see you get two dice, a green and a red one. The green one is a defense dice and the red one is an attacking dice. And they've just got symbols. So the red one's got your, your hits, crit, which means that you've done a lot of damage, or uh, focus, which means if you, you could actually have the option to change your focus tokens into that. And the defense tokens just have you know a dodge or um, a focus. focus yeah. So you know, and likewise, you can dodge. It, you can spend your token and dodge the attacks. And different ships have different amount of dice. So really aggressive ships have loads of red dice. Look, very defensive ships have loads of green dice. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, if you've got a Tie Fighter shooting something, an A wing, very unlikely to hit because he's got two red dice and the A wing's got basic three three, three green. Dice. So, yeah. so he's very likely to cancel the attack and so on and so forth. So it's all uh, about maneuvering the right ships against the right targets as well. And then we've got the range ruler as well. So you can you put this range ruler down to see what sort of range and who, who can you hit. And it's got bands on it as well. So you've got bands one, two, and three. If you're in band one, you're gonna be hit by a stronger shot. So the attacker gets more dice. Mm -hmm. uh, and band three, the defender gets more dice. Yeah. So, you know, it, um, as and just if that was as if that wasn't enough, you've got, as uh, the previously mentioned, asteroids. So they are terrain, basically. Um, uh, think impassable terrain, obstacles. Uh, you, you, they're kind of semi-randomly scattered over each battlefield. Um, and you do not want to crash your ships into them because they, they, that's usually very bad. You get damaged. Uh, you have to roll damaged dice to see if you, you know, uh, get hit by the rock sort of thing. Um, so that's another dimension. There's tactics around where do you put your asteroids. Certainly, and, yeah. Or you can just put them down randomly like I do every game and just see how it goes. <laughs> you know, that's fine. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's for a very simple rule set, but it expands out into a, so, a whole a whole hobby, really. To a tough, a tough one, nearly, as well. Yeah. Let's talk about the future of X-Wing. The game's future. So we're talking about the future of X-Wing. Yeah. So this this game is relatively uh, new at the moment. It's um, and it's had a, a lot of love and a lot of support, and it's been a, a growing uh, community and a massive success. A really good community growing up around. Yeah, absolutely and everywhere. <clears throat> it's um, it's proved it's a very competitive game and a friendly game at the same time, and it's got a rule set that really uh, that has has made a community and it's created a lot of friendships. Yeah, and a very good sportsman. Uh, game and no rage quits that i've ever seen so far no they? precisely no, nobody gets angry about it do they? <laughs> so we're going to talk about the future of the game and what, how do you think it's going to evolve well we started with a, a tie fighter and two x wings then we expanded out and we were all shocked to see the millennium falcon and the slave one and large ships arriving a little while later we got these huge epic ships uh, which we blew us away absolutely um and uh, they just keep us interested with uh, you know, an almost infinite uh, release release wave after wave of new ships and, mm -hmm. and stuff. The future, well, there'll be more waves. Uh, there's some sort of movie based on this game coming out soon, I believe. So uh, <laughs> there might be a few ship designs to be released out of that. Um, that'll keep us going for a while and I hope really rekindle, uh, renew and rekindle new players to, to start joining it uh, and join the community. So that would be great. Um, in terms of, I mean, we've got Epic Play now, uh, which is rarer it's, it's less often played but um there's more epic and we've got 
three or four epic ships out now. Well, <laughs> sorry. Right. Oh. So yeah, uh, epic play. Epic play. Yeah. The epic ship's coming out. There's a, uh, another epic ship or two coming out. Some awesome Imperial Eddie Stobart thing that drew, poops out Tie Fighters as it flies along. Can't wait for that. Um, should mention as well the future of the game uh, is also its past and its present. In the FFG, we really do support the game. I mean, there's there's up to date FAQs out all the time, and I hope that continues. Um, and you know, they're, they're constantly trying to make the game as, as good as it can be um, and, and they're always reviewing the rules and uh, really keeping us informed of, of how it should be played really. What, one uh, nice thing they do is they do listen to the feedback from people yeah. and they seem to um, you know, adhere to what the people want and really go with that customer focus. They do, yeah. I mean, the example is the damage decks. They did, they did say that the new damage deck in the new set would have to be used from January in tournaments, January 2016. And some people complained about that and you know pointed out it might not be fair to everybody and they they uh, changed the decision so you know that's brilliant not not every company does that no absolutely not um, uh, that that's an interesting one it's a living game you know yeah. that they support all the time and i hope they continue to do so in the future so yeah um, but yeah i think lots of uh, new trilogy stuff just keep rolling, keep it rolling on and on. Really. Do you think that Epic Play is going to uh, find itself a bigger market? Because uh, firstly, everyone's going to have a lot of ships. You know, whatever we, everyone's going to have built up this collection. So, do you think that Epic Play will find itself? I think there's two kinds of players. Um, there's the guy like me and you, Si, and quite a lot of the people we know who buy everything. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we know guys who bought at least three of these things, and they're not super. They're not. They work. They've got value for money, but they're not. They're not a tenner. I'll put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he's bought th at least three of them, if not four. Um, and he just is obsessed with Epic Play. Um, there's guys who buy the core set and a few extra ships and play with the family or the, the you know, the, the, the kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and and they're quite happy to do that. And they'll they'll come along to the occasional tournament and and you know, uh, see see a new uh, get a new viewpoint on lists and. Uh, tactical play um, so there's, there's those two there's the obsessives like us and there's the casual guy and I oh, think that will carry on I think we obsessives will buy everything there's um, a lot of people who, who will go out and you know on the day that these are released I'll buy four B wings because they need the 100 point list yeah because the new net list is out or whatever and they've got to try yeah. it out and um, you know the, the, there's a, a, a a black market, well not a black market, but there's a market on eBay for rare upgrade cars that you can only get in a certain ship, you know, mm -hmm. people will split the, the set and sell them on, on eBay and all the rest of it. Um, if you want to go down, down that road, you can. Um, but I think that will stay the same, but I think the number of obsessives will increase with the new films. Um, I think so, this, this game's got a bright future, hasn't yeah. it? It's got at least three years. Yeah. And, um, you know, not like, unlike The Hobbit, it's not going to be dropped. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> sort a sore subject I'll, to uh, we will not alter their name here again <laughs> yeah anyway let's talk about the uh, value of the action value before we even talk about any pricing structures for how, how much the individual ships cost what i want to say personally is ffg have the best service available they go above and beyond to actually uh, reply to you if you're disgruntled about anything, to tell you where your parts are coming, what, what, what went wrong, how it went wrong, why they'll fix it. So they do a great job there. They, um, and they actually really care for the customers and the community. So <coughs> as we were saying earlier, that not only do they care what people think about the rules, they do care about your models and how you feel about the games, because they realize that you are going to be st stuck with this game and you, they want you to love mm. it, to keep on buying into it, to keep on going. And it's a, you know, for literally a few pence, you know, out of their pocket, they're really, really making it. Yeah, they're going to be saying a customer. It's a really good, good way of doing business, really. Um, yeah, so, I mean, moving on to the price of it, the core set in the UK is round about 25, 25 to 30 pounds, yeah. Um, you get, you do get a game out of the box that you can play over and over. That's, it's really good value. Um, if you buy two of them, um, you, you've got a good way towards a, a standardised 100 point tourney list or, or two lists, you know, mm -hmm. one, one Imperial, one Rebel, so that's really good. And then uh, then you've got the various expansions, um, so, you, which you can see some of here. Every ship is like £100, pound, oh, 100 pounds, 10, 10 pounds. <laughs> 
10 pounds for the small ones, 15 to 20 for the bigger ones, and then, you know, well, that's 50. <coughs> that's Depends where you go. 40. I mean, the resale price of that is about, what, 65, 70? Oh, 70 or yeah. whatever. Um, yeah. You know, but, you know, so you can expect, you can expect to pay more for the uh, bigger ships, but um, for, in my opinion, not very much. 100 pounds is going to get you a few different lists, a few different Yeah, forms. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So you're talking about not nothing that's going to break the bank. Compared to uh, any other war game, or sorry, any other hobby that you're really trying to get into, this is um, relatively inexpensive. Yeah, for the because if you've got a hundred point or a couple of hundred point tournament lists, you've got a lot of depth of play and keep you going for a few months. Even if you go to quite a few tournaments, um, you know it takes. If, if you've got a, a quirky list, it can take you a good few games to really get the best out of it. Just because you you discover new things along the way, so you lay down. About hundred pounds, you've got months and months of, uh, you know, entertainment really, and, and uh, the lists don't go out of date. Um, so I mean, the, the infamous tie swarm, which is where you just do hundred point list. There's nothing but tie fighters, which individually are quite rubbish, but in a swarm, they're, they're good. That's never really gone away since the start of the game, has it? You no, know, that's no. still a valid list. It still wins taunts, events, and things like that. Um, more options have come in with the upgrades or whatever, and everything seemed quite good. But you know, at the at the, at the end of the day, it's a ship with very similar stats. Yeah, and that's where people are actually paying for. And at the high end of the, the tournament community, you know, if, if you're into that sort of thing, there's a, a, a meta a meta game merry go round. Yes. you know, two big ships is is the hotness this month, and then somebody comes along with a tie swarm and destroys it. Mm -hmm. So suddenly everybody's taking out little ships, and so on and so on. Certain upgrade cards come yeah. in and then drift away again. I mean, there's there's a bit of a, a thread in the community at the moment about um, certain upgrade cards never get used. It's quite a small number, mm -hmm. you know, things that have never got used. And I'm convinced it's just because nobody's found the right combination to use them with, and somebody's going to, you know, totally take out an event with some upgrade card that everybody currently uh, laughs at. Famously, you can see FFG do actually <coughs> bring in cards that can use it, but yeah. people might not be very quick to actually see, oh look at this, here's yeah. how you could do it. Sometimes you look at an upgrade card and think, what's that for, I don't get it, and then somebody will absolutely wipe you off the table with it, you know, yeah. oh I get it. Yeah, yeah. So. There, there are some characters I think are just doomed to uh, never make, uh, never appear, <laughs> you know, Fel's Wrath or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just dies, but you know. Darth Vader. <laughs> No, he, he's, he's made a comeback. He's made a comeback, yeah. He was laughed at for a long time. But, you know, so um, value for money, I think it is. I think you'd agree. The, the most value for money I've ever seen in a sort of war game. It's not really a board game, it's more towards a war game and it's a hobby. One thing we haven't mentioned is if you really want to, um, and I've dabbled in it myself, is uh, all the miniatures are pre-painted, um, mm -hmm. but you can paint them yourselves. And uh, if you search for X-Wing custom paint job uh, on the internet you'll see some amazing things people have done with these ships um, you know it's a, another hobby in itself really similar to other war games but you don't have to do a, a stroke of painting if you don't want to the paint quality on the models is uh, it varies a bit sometimes but it's generally really really good isn't it i think so and it's improved since the game first came out very past very uh, very very good tabletop standard yeah yeah you know i've never uh, i never i'll never paint the occasional one, I painted the, uh, the fire sprays up, you know, to be various characters, but that was about it. Imperials, they should just be grey, really. That's all there is Okay, so, uh, yeah, big thumbs up from both of us, I think. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay, well, uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoy the show. Is there any other games you want us to uh, review or whatever? Any comments, leave them below. See you next time. Cheerio. four epic ships out now. Do you think that because people actually have them... Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> oh no.